This motor scooter is on its way around the world. So far, it has traveled 60,000 miles. It's being driven by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Clive Lewis. My name is Clive Lewis. My name is Clive Lewis. Only one of these men is the real Clive Lewis. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Robert Q. Lewis, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening Bud. Bud. Robert Q., it's a great pleasure to welcome you back to our show. Thank you, Bud. I'm right. glad to be back as a sort of tourist in New York. Also, I understand you're coming back to, to these digs right along now. A couple of weeks. And uh, then I hear that you're going to take over on uh, Play Your Hunch this week? Two weeks, huh? Good luck. Thank you, thank you. Beth. I would like to ask you a rather personal question. Please. I don't know where I got this information, but I am informed that out in California, they bill you as the world's worst disc jockey. What? Yeah. That's, uh, why? Why? Because they tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that when you're I heard it. You must not... hear the show. He <laughs> gives the New York weather, though, and that's what. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Okay, panel, uh, open air envelopes, if you will. For the first time, take out your affidavit cards and follow along as I read. I, Clive Lewis, set out in January 1960 on a trip around the world. Traveling by motor scooter, I have already covered over 60,000 miles and have just about 3,000 more miles to go. Through 25 countries, I paid my own way by working at any job I could get. I worked as a bartender on the island of Guernsey, a steel worker in France, a school teacher in India, a sugar cane cutter in Queensland, and a postman in Sydney, Australia. My method of traveling is time consuming but economical. I started out with $180 and now have $300 left. <laughs> Signed, Clive Lewis. <laughs> Voyageurs extraordinary, I guess you could call them. Gentlemen all claiming to be Clive Lewis, the man who scoots around the world. And we'll start the questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. I was just going to tell a little anecdote. Just before the show, I walked in, and I saw the gentleman on the left, right? Well, those of you who know will agree with me when I say I said, hello, Charlie, because he looks just like Charlie Baker. I thought he was Charlie Baker from... And he went... <laughs> <laughs> looking, like not looking, not wanting me to see anything. I didn't recognize him. I don't know who he is. I would like to ask him, though, Charlie. Uh, number one. Can you tell me how close to the ground, number one, you cut sugar cane? Pretty low. As low as you can without taking somebody's legs off. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, what, what are in those bags? Which no, bags? Oh, under under your your eyes. Eyes. Yeah, my tent, my, uh, uh, my tent and my cooking stuff, cameras, the other stuff I used on the trip. Thank you. Uh, number three, what are the turnpike rules about the size of your wheels? I'm just not allowed to use the turnpike. What is the rule based on? Do you know? Dangerous um, activity, I guess. <laughs> Peggy Cass. He's not allowed to use the what? Turnpike. Don't use my time. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> number one, what ocean is Perth on? Oh, on the Pacific. Uh, number two, uh, where is Brisbane? Which province of West Australia? Western Australia. West Australia. Uh, number three, what province is Brisbane in? Queensland. Uh, and uh, number one, where's Joan Sutherland from in Australia? Melbourne. Uh, number two, uh, how do you make shandy gaff? Shandy gaff with, with beer and uh, lemonade. Um, no <laughs> Robert Q, if you can. Still. I'll, I'll try. Number three. Uh, number three, uh, have you been traveling on scooters for some time? Three years. Is yours, what, uh, what is the uh, national origin number three of your scooter? Italian. Italian. Yes. Again, number three. To your best knowledge, is there an American scooter made? I believe so, yes. Number one, can you tell me if that is so, who makes the American scooter? 
I wouldn't know. Most of the ones I know come from Italy. Number two, do you know whether there is an American scooter the made? The same company that makes the golf carts. Makes the golf, golf carts. carts? You know uh, what comes uh, I'm from not the sure the name Very is. well. Uh, number three, uh, the steelworks in which you worked in France. Was the name of that Le Comtade? Le? Le Comtade. No. Number one, have you heard of the Le Comtade steelworks in France? No, I haven't. Kitty. Number one, how far is Alderney from uh, Guernsey? Alderney? Yes. Um, about 50 or 60 miles across the sea. Uh, number two, who uh, runs uh, Guernsey? That's, that's the place you come from, isn't it? Guernsey? Guernsey, I work yeah. there. Oh, yeah, well, who, who runs it? The British. Have they got a, a representative? Well, you always have the governor. Yeah. Thank you. Number three, when you cut sugar cane, is there an itch that goes with it? <laughs> I, I should say a, a backache. No, it's not an itch. <laughs> And there we'll have to leave it. Our time is up, so get to the business of marking your ballots, if you will, please. Panel immediately and without change, also, of course, without consultation. Voting as you do for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will, as usual, receive $250 for every incorrect vote indulged in by our panelists. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Uh, I heard... Uh, a lot of the voices in the audience calling out number three, so I guess we agree on that. <laughs> I voted before I heard him, though. <laughs> I didn't want to vote for number one. He looks too much like Charlie Baker. <laughs> Peggy. Well, I voted for number three as well because he knew where Brisbane was. And I don't think it was west. I thought Brisbane was north. Oh, if it's number two, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Robert Q, it's I am afraid I've joined the club, uh, but I voted for number three. I never did like Charlie Baker myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason. I really think it's number three. And Kitty. I voted for number two because he looks big enough to have... Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> he looks big enough to have uh, run this thing all over everywhere. And if anyone who's ever cut sugar cane knows that you itch terribly after you've cut sugar cane, there's something about it that... Uh, it's not just the backache. All right, there we have it. We've come to the point of driving our scooter down the home stretch to the truth. Let's find out which one of these gentlemen is the real world traveler by scooter. So will the real Clive Lewis please stand up? <laughs> What about the itch? Did you never get the itch? It's no, too funny. I'm I, I didn't experience that itch. <laughs> <laughs> He's immune to it. He's immune to it, that's right. Number one, may we have your real name outside of Charlie Baker and what you really do, please? My name is John Wilcock, and I'm a freelance writer and a columnist for the Village Voice in Greenwich Village, New York City. Thank you. And number two, you got a vote. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Morris Cooper. I'm unemployed at this time. I'm a restaurant major at the East. Thank you. you. Check through the score and find that the panel was smart to start things off tonight. One incorrect vote at $250 for you gentlemen to divide from Salem Cigarettes, as well, of course, as a carton of Salem's for each of you. And we hope you enjoyed your visit as much as we enjoyed having you here. Happy balance of trips, sir. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>Tell the Truth is brought to you five days a week on many of these same stations at 3.30 Eastern Time. I know you'll enjoy it, so why don't you join us then? Just check your local paper for the correct time in your area. We look forward to having you as part of our audience. And now, let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Muriel Simbro. My name is Muriel Simbro. My name is Muriel Simbro. Follow along with your copies of this next affidavit, if you will, panel. I, Muriel Simbro, am a housewife, mother, and parachute jumper. Since I started two years ago, I have made more than 500 free fall jumps. Recently, in competition with 38 of the top lady parachutists in the world, I became the first American woman to win a gold medal in international competition. 
I am the world's woman's parachute jumping champion. Signed, Muriel Simbro. <laughs> courageous young ladies this time panel, each one claiming to be the world's champion woman parachute jumper, Muriel Simbro. We start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, uh, how many rip cords do you pull when you jump? Well, there are 38 suspension cords. 38, but you pull how many? One. You pull one. One rip cord. Number two, I noticed that you were carrying a pack. I take it that's your parachute. How that's heavy is reserve. it? My your reserve. reserve. How heavy is it? about 10 pounds. And what you wear is 10 pounds? Oh, I come to about 40 pounds altogether. I mean, Thank not you. me, but my Thank outfit. You. You know? <laughs> 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 Number three, when you jump, why do they always yell Geronimo? Well, that's an old term, I believe. You don't yell Geronimo anymore? No. <laughs> Number one, if you fall in a tree, what do you do? Yell Geronimo. Get out of your parachute <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Number two. Oh, Tom. That's a good Thank you. Uh, number three, what's the name of that uh, center in uh, Massachusetts or New England, the Parachute Jumping Center? Do you know, happen to know? The Orange Parachute Center. Uh, thank you. Number two, are any panels ever removed from a parachute? Yes, they are. The modifications. Can you tell us why that might be? Well, yes. For your steering purposes, you, you have panels out. <laughs> Uh, the thank different you. modifications, you know. Thank you. Number one, in your competition, does free fall, is free fall, does that enter into it? Yes, it does. What does that mean exactly, number one? A free fall is a five second delay before you pull the ripcord. Uh, number two, thank you. Peggy. Uh, number two, who is Jacqueline Oriol? Jacqueline Oriol? Yes. Uh, number three, know. do you know? No, I don't. Number one, do you? No, I don't. Uh, mm, that takes care of her. And num <laughs> uh, number two, who pulls your parachute? I do. Oh. Number three, um, don't you, can't you fall, free fall longer than five seconds? Yes. I mean, isn't a free fall championship would be the longest you could fall before you pulled the ripcord? Yes, it is. I see. What is the longest free fall, uh, the, the championship? Uh, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> Uh, number one, what is your parachute made of? Nylon. I see. And, uh, number three... Robert? I don't know anything about parachute jumping. <laughs> <laughs> you just put them down on the floor and I jump had over a, them. <laughs> I had a friend once who was a parachute jumper. That was it. <laughs> one time. I, uh, there's one name I do know in that field, number three. Your runner-up in the competition just recently was named Florence. What was her last name, please? There was no Florence that I know of. <laughs> Your friend was lying to you. You ever heard of Jacqueline Kennedy? <laughs> how big is a parachute in circumference, number, uh, number one? How big is a parachute in circumference? Well, it's 28 feet in diameter, the circumference. I don't really know. Never measured, eh? No. <laughs> Never walked around it. Well, there we are now. I hope you've guided your respective parachutes to safe spots on your ballots. Will you mark your ballots right now? Vote now without any further questioning, and of course, without consultation as usual. Voting as you do for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? All ballots? Bob, have you marked yours? Robert, have you marked yours? Okay. Uh, Tom, for whom? Well, I did, I did write with the people that were calling out the numbers last time, not this time. They said two, and I said three. I, she looks exactly like a housewife and mother. <laughs> Peggy, what about your choice? Well, I voted for number three as well because she knew about Orange, and I'm from Massachusetts, and I'm loyal. <laughs> Robert Q? I voted for number one. Any girl who doesn't know her own circumference, I'm for her. <laughs> and Kitty, which one do you think is Well, I voted one? for number one because number two standing up there had the most beautiful long fingernails I ever saw. And I don't believe you can be a parachute jumper and keep them like that. <laughs> <laughs> and on your hands, and number, <laughs> number one looks like a housewife and a parachute jumper. All it's, right, so there we have it now. It's split up, two and two. Two votes for number one, two votes for number three. Let's see who's right and who's wrong. 
as we learn the true identity as to which one of these ladies is the real ladies parachute jumping champion. So will the real Muriel Simbro please stand up? Thank you very much, and our congratulations to you. All safe jumps to you in the future. Number one, may we have your real name and what you really do? Rixie Geiselman, and I'm a first mate on a charter boat in Nassau, British West Indies. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, number two, what is your real name and what do you do? Well, I'm Colleen Farrington, and I'm a nightclub singer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we have it. It's easy to remember, I'm sure, that there were two incorrect votes. That's the part that interests you most, I'm sure. That's a total of $250 each from Salem Cigarettes of $500. And we hope it brings you great joy and happiness. And on the way out, there will be a carton of Salem's for each of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Present our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Charlie Tola. My name is Charlie Tola. <laughs> My name is Charlie Tola. All right, you've had a look. So will you now give a look at your affidavit cards, panel, and follow along as I read. I, Charlie Tola, play in the backfield for the championship Houston Oilers professional football team. Football occupies half of my year, the other half, I spend fighting oil and gas well fires. Last summer, I helped put out some six major well fires, including the famous Devil's Cigarette Lighter, a huge gas well fire that had been raging out of control in the Sahara Desert for almost six months. Extinguishing the 450-foot torch took four weeks of preparation. We finally blew the flame out with 500 pounds of dynamite. With large hoses playing water on us, we rode a bulldozer to within 50 feet of the roaring inferno to place the dynamite charge. Signed, Charlie Toller. <laughs> All three of these very stalwart gentlemen claim to be Charlie Toller, firefighting football player. And we'll start with Peggy Cass. Peggy, you're the one that said wow when they appeared yes, up there. Yes, it's nice to have these boys on. <laughs> <laughs> They're very healthy looking. Uh, Charlie Toller, number one. What is the name of the Dallas football team? Dallas Texans. And number two, what is the name of the Dallas football team? Dallas Texans. Number three, do you agree with that? Well, there are two teams. It's, what's the other team called? Cowboys. Uh, num uh, number three, there's been a recent scandal about offset drilling. Where does that, where did that all take place in Texas? You know, when they go in sideways into the other guy's well? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I did What was... Well, you know, uh, they've been drilling, uh, pretending they're going this way, but they've gone sideways and drilled into other people's wells in Texas. Well, what was the question? Whereabouts what? in Texas was that taking place? Well, I, I fight fires. I don't know anything oh, about I that. <laughs> Robert Q. <laughs> well, let's find out a little more about that. Number three, uh, where is your home? Where do you make your home when you're in the States? In... Houston, in, uh, on a football, when I'm playing football in Houston. In Houston. Where do you live ordinarily, number three? <laughs> the last year I lived in Houston. And number one, where did that uh, sideway drilling take place? <laughs> I don't have the slightest idea. <laughs> well, how do I get there? <laughs> number two, I am very curious about this, uh, this uh, tremendous fire that was put out. Uh, 500 pounds of dynamite? Yes, sir. Uh, may I ask... Uh, how, and you got 50, within 50 feet of this. May I ask how the dynamite was set? How was the charge set? The charge was set on the end of a big boom type apparatus backed in by a bulldozer. And it was uh, put in a big barrel. Kitty. Number one, can you tell me where you were based? Where I'm based? No, in, in the Sahara. What was the nearest town? I, I couldn't tell you. We were about 600 miles south of uh, Tunisia. I see. Number two, uh, can you tell me where Bahrain is? No, I can't. 
Number three, do you know? <laughs> not really. I'm not offhand, no. Do you know where Kuwait is, number one? No, I don't. Number two, where does the pipeline go from the Sahara? Where does it debouch? In what port? They run it into Algiers. And what's the name of the port? I don't know the do name of the port. Do you know number port. three? No, we fight for fires. We don't get a while. They don't burn the port. Tom Poston. Well, let me ask number three. What is actually burning in those uh, uh, oil well fires? In oil well fires, it's oil. <laughs> number two, do you agree Next with question? that? In your oil well fires, yes, sir, it is oil burning. You have different type wells, your oil and your gas wells. That's what I was getting at in a, in a way. Number, uh, number one, who's the quarterback on your team? George Blender. Uh, thank you. Number one, who's the alternate quarterback? Oh, well, Tarrington is in, and uh, they're using a young kid named Smith now. He hasn't played at all. Thank you. Number two, uh, who'd you play Saturday? San Diego. Number three, what's their nickname? You mean the San Diego team? Charger. What device do they have on their helmets? Do you remember? Number three? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Well, uh, there isn't time anyway. The time is up. Time for you now to charge down the field, if you will. Put out your own particular fires by marking your ballots right now and without change. And, of course, without consultation, as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody marked? Tom? I ain't marked yet, but <laughs> you haven't. I'm going to vote for you this time. All right, I'll take it. Uh, why not? Two, I heard you out there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy, what is oh. your choice? Well, I voted for 2-2. Two, 2-2? Two. Two, two? Two, two. <laughs> because, honestly, if you lived in Texas, you'd want to know about that going into the other guy's well. And the other two didn't, so I figured maybe he did. And besides, he's nice, looks like a nice, honest boy from Texas. <laughs> a very tough football. Robert Q. Well, you might as well all be prepared to go down to the feet. <laughs> I don't know one. Very obvious. I have no reason. Kitty. I voted for number two. He told me the pipeline the bouch in Algeria, and I'm not sure it's true, but at least he had some idea. <laughs> so I voted for number two. He also looks like a good stalwart firefighter. Yeah. All right, there you have it. Once again, we sneak up on that final line. We'll see whether we go over for a goal or not as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real combination firefighter football player. So will the real Charlie Toller please stand up? Ah! <laughs> It's a mean game of football, too. Charlie, just for the record, how tall are you? 5'7". Five, 5'7", seven. Five, seven. and what do you weigh? 200. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot packed in there, isn't it? Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Please? Yes, uh, my name is Ralph Lovies, and uh, I build housing developments. <laughs> and number three, may we have your real name and what you do, please? My name is Wayne Storm. I own and operate a pony ranch in New Jersey. <laughs> second time tonight. They got three out of four. That leaves only one incorrect, and that means, of course, from Salem Cigarettes for you gentlemen, $250 to divide. And our great thanks to you. You will also receive a carton of Salem's on your way out. Thanks for being with us. Good night. God bless you. Kitty, you've been kind of dazzling me with a bit of your own fire over there. I'm fascinated by that dress. Thank you, bud. It's made out of cellophane by Fabiani. Imagine. Made out of what? Cellophane. I hope nobody puts a match to me. I hope you don't stand in front of a light. <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> don't rub her the wrong way, though. No, no. <laughs> really? That's a well, beautiful all... package, whatever it is. It's your, you're all mighty smart tonight, believe me. Real smart. Mm. I don't know. You're getting very precious knowledge here. Very good knowledge. You've been all over. You've done so many things. And I want to talk to you later about that sidewise drilling, Peggy. I want to learn a little bit more about yeah, he's that. He's going to be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time for. Good night, and Thanks again for making it such a joyous evening. And for you, don't forget to join us next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on our daytime show. And right now, this is Bud Collier saying good night for Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. CBS News will present a special report on Mississippi tonight at 10.30, 9.30 Central Time on most of these stations.
truth has been brought to you by Salem, the cigarette that refreshes your taste. This is Johnny Olson saying good night. For To Tell the Truth, the preceding program was pre-recorded.